Hello, it's Saturday the 2nd of May. You're tuned in to our late night newscast coming to you from Adi Dang's news centre in Seoul. Thanks as always for being with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story tonight, eight months after starting talks on the sensitive issue of reforming the pension system for civil servants, a deal has been reached. With Korea's rapidly ageing population, Parliament was left with no choice but to make public sector workers pay more but receive less after they retire. Song Jisun starts us off. Korea's National Assembly has finally agreed on a plan to reform the pension system for public sector workers. Public workers will see their monthly insurance premiums rise by an average of 30 percent, but the pension payouts will be cut by an average of 10 percent over the next 20 years. That means a public worker who served 30 years and received a monthly salary of 3,000 U.S. dollars will now pay $250 a month in pension contributions to receive $1,500 a month after retirement. Under the revised plan, more than $300 billion will be saved over the next 70 years. The two sides also agreed to allocate 20 percent of the saved amount to the National Pension Service to supplement a pension plan for the general public and the less privileged. We believe this could be the start of further public sector reforms. We were also encouraged that we could do it with the stakeholders taking part in the process. Showing gratitude to public workers for sharing the burden for Korea's future generations, lawmakers will work towards improving the public pension program in the parliamentary session in fall. This agreement will become the yardstick for many structural reforms our society needs, especially in the labor sector. With Korea's society aging fast, the public workers' pension would have an on track to hit an annual deficit of $10 billion by 2025 and over $3 billion of taxpayers' money was to be poured into foot that bill if this reform had not been agreed. Song ji Arirang News. Now, taking their case to the United Nations for the first time, Korean activists and survivors are saying it's high time Japan apologize to and compensate Koreans who were taken to Japan as forced laborers and fell victim to the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. The demand was made at the review conference of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty taking place on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. 72-year-old Shim Jin Tae, who was a toddler living with his father at the time of the bombing, said most Koreans who were in Japan at that time were taken there to work against their will. He said the Japanese government must apologize and compensate the victims, and the United States should also take responsibility for dropping the atomic bombs. 100,000 Koreans were affected by those bombings, with half, roughly 50,000, dying the instant the bombs exploded. More than 500 protesters held a rally in Los Angeles on Friday local time to demand an apology for Japan's wartime atrocities from visiting Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Gathered outside a hotel in L.A., the demonstrators sounded off against Abe's lack of atonement for the Japanese Imperial Army's sexual enslavement of hundreds of thousands of women from Korea, China and other nations in the 1930s and during World War II. The protesters demanded Abe use his high-profile trip to the U.S. to issue a sincere apology for the horror those women and young girls endured decades ago. Abe, who gave a speech to the U.S. Congress earlier this week, has sidestepped calls for him to say sorry throughout his week-long trip to the U.S. The Korean government says Abe has missed the opportunity for reconciliation by glossing over the darkest parts of Japan's history. 
Crude oil importers may be smiling with the low oil prices, but their gains are not that significant, while the negative impact exporters are feeling is much larger. The International Monetary Fund says the current price of oil benefits importers like Korea with a fiscal surplus of about 1% of their GDPs, but exporters will see an average fiscal deficit of 4%. And countries like Iraq and Qatar that rely almost exclusively on oil exports could log fiscal deficits of up to 30% of their GDP. The IMF forecasts oil producers will be unable to avoid a current account deficit if crude prices fall below 60 US dollars a barrel this year. Korea is taking its push to promote the health benefits and general deliciousness of Korean food to the next level. A special pavilion themed solely on Korean food, or hanshik as it's known here, has opened at the Milan Expo 2015 and Korea's signature dishes are winning rave reviews. Kim ji reports. Hundreds of pots dotted around this special pavilion give visitors from around the world a first-hand view of the fermentation process involved in the preparation of some of Korea's traditional dishes. Under this year's theme of feeding the planet energy for life, Korean cuisine is on display at the Milan Expo. Some of Korea's signature dishes, including pibimpa, a spicy mix of rice, meat and vegetables, and japchae, sweet potato noodles, are offered to global participants. A lot of uh, fusion ingredients, uh, like meat with some fruits. With its mission to find healthy food for the future, the Milan Expo, which opened on Friday, will run for the next six months. Also taking part in the event is Korea's culture minister Kim jong dok who hopes the expo will help promote hanshik, or Korean traditional food, to the world. We need to change the way we promote hanshik. It's important to consider Korean food as a cultural content rather than merely a way to make bigger profits. The ministry says it will designate June 23rd as Korean Day, a holiday for the promotion of hanshik. North Korea is also expected to take part in the expo, highlighting the benefits of insam, slow-growing perennial plants that are known for enhancing one's energy and overall well-being. Kim Jong. The authorities in Nepal have ruled out the possibility of finding any more survivors buried in the rubble from last Saturday's devastating earthquake. This comes as the death toll surpassed 6,600 people on Saturday. Officials say the main focus has shifted to reaching survivors in remote areas who have yet to receive relief supplies a full week after the earthquake. UNICEF says there's only a small window of time for relief workers to put in place measures to protect people from deadly disease outbreaks as the monsoon season will start very soon. An official from UNICEF says overflowing hospitals, a lack of water, exposed bodies and people sleeping in the open make it a perfect breeding ground for dis diseases. The earthquake has left 3 million people needing food and flattened more than 130,000 homes. Six police officers in the U.S. city of Baltimore have been charged in the death of Freddie Gray, an African-American man who died in police custody. The city's top prosecutor, Marilyn Mosby, said Gray's arrest was illegal and unjustified, and she added that the officers ignored Gray's pleas for medical attention during a ride between the site of his arrest and a police booking center. Now, the officers, three black and three white, five men and one woman are charged with crimes ranging from second-degree murder, manslaughter and assault, and they have since been released from detention on bail. Now, the city's police union slammed the decision to charge the officers, saying there had been a rush to judgment given that the probe has not yet been concluded. The 25-year-old's death sparked violent protests in Baltimore this week. Now, exercise, of course, is generally considered to be very good for us, but there's a new study out showing that it can be harmful to people who have cancer. Korean researchers have discovered a chemical compound that's created during exercise that could potentially speed up the growth of cancer cells. Park se young reports. The body uses a lot of oxygen when you exercise, which is why you end up breathing heavily afterwards.
This action isn't always enough to supply the body with the oxygen it needs, so the body produces lactate, which acts as an energy source during exercise. But now Korean researchers have discovered that a protein called NDRG3, which sends a signal to accelerate the growth of cancer cells, is also boosted by lactate. NDRG3 is present in all cells, and it promotes cell growth and the creation of blood vessels. A body with plenty of oxygen can break the protein down. Without enough oxygen, however, the protein combines with the lactate buildup, speeding up cancer cell growth. The team's experiments with mice showed that liver cancer cells in animals with NDRG3 grew at more than twice the rate as those in which the protein was suppressed. We've come to a deeper understanding of normal human bodily activity by studying the molecular basis for lactate-induced signaling. We can use the finding to develop therapies for disorders related to oxygen deficiency. Previous studies have shown the influence of lactate on tumor growth, but they weren't able to explain how it happens and what role lactate plays in the process. Meanwhile, the team says cancer patients can't forego exercise completely, but should design their workouts in consultation with a physician. The discovery was published in the U.S. Journal Cell in April. Park Se-young, Arirang News. And finally, taking a brief look at the weather, it's raining over most of the central region tonight, so if you are heading out, you will need an umbrella. It's going to be a mild night, however, with the low only dipping to 16 degrees Celsius in Seoul, so you'll only need a light jacket. Sunday will start out under cloudy skies and we'll see a high of 22 degrees in the capital. Now let's take a closer look at the weather around the world. And those are the stories we've been following on this Saturday night in Seoul. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out our website, arirang.co.kr forward slash news, and do download our smartphone application. Just search for Arirang TV. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.